For all its material advantages, the sedentary life has left us edgy, unfulfilled. Even after 400 generations in villages and cities, we haven't forgotten. The open road still softly calls, like a nearly forgotten song of childhood. invest far off places with a certain romance. The appeal, I suspect, has been meticulously crafted by natural selection as an essential element in our survival. Long summers, mild winters, rich harvests, plentiful game, none of them lasts forever. Your own life, or your band's, or even your species might be owed to a restless few drawn by a craving they can hardly articulate or understand to undiscovered lands and new worlds. Herman Melville in Moby Dick spoke for wanderers in all epochs and meridians. He said, I am tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail forbidden seas. opportunities beckon. Silently, they orbit the sun, waiting. Well, what an awesome and inspirational video. Um, the reason I love this video so much is because it wakes up something in me, the curious wonderer in me that wants to explore different places and see what they have to offer. I want you to imagine with me for a few seconds that after this presentation, instead of going to the same bar or the same place for dinner that you've been to so many times before, you could go to a different planet or to a different galaxy and still make it back tomorrow morning in time for work. Imagine if this were possible. And what if I told you that all the technology it takes to make this a possibility is currently being worked on by my team and I at Manmake Machine, and in, not, in the not-too-distant future, this will become a reality. Well, my talk today is about why I'm so passionate about space and how I got onto this journey. So my journey begins in Nairobi, Kenya, where I was born and raised, and where it so happens that um, because of family and friends, I got to see the different conflict situations that were being experienced first hand. So on the one hand, you had the nomadic tribes who believed that should be able to traverse one corner of the country to the other without having to have any borders or restrictions, that human beings and animals should be able to travel and roam freely. On, and on the other side, you had the agricultural tribes who believed that should fence off land so that you could protect your farms and your plants, get sustenance off the land. And so in the particular year that the nomadic tribes would go into what they believed was communal land that has been freely available for generations and find it fenced off, 
and they couldn't access the pastures and water anymore, then this would often cause a lot of conflict and adversity. So it got me wondering, what was, at, what was at the core root of this problem? Why were people always fighting with each other? What was at the core root of the conflict? Well, the, at the core root of the conflict, I realized, was the competition for limited resources, the lack of adequate resources here on Earth. Then I looked at this on a global scale, and this was even more alarming because people were dying, people were fighting over oil, wars were being fought, People are dying right now trying to cross continents and migrate. And I, I realized that the, the whole reason we have borders is because we're trying to restrict access to the earth's resources based on, on nationality. What if we could get every living human being here on earth the access to space and all the infinite resources that it has to offer? Yes, we'd still have political strife and religious strife, but then would no longer be fighting over limited resources here on Earth because we, have all the, we are able to access all the resources that the universe has to offer us. So how do we make this possible? How do we make this a reality? Well, the first challenge to, to solving, and we can solve this challenge, is by making space travel fast, re reliable, and accessible to all. And so my team and I are working on an electronic propulsion system that takes an electrical energy source or power supply. We feed this into a magnetron, which we then use to generate microwaves that we force through a nozzle into a cavity. And because of some quantum effects that are happening inside this cavity, thrust is generated um, coming out of the cavity, which allows the object to accelerate forward. So we're building this in conjunction with the engineers at UCT. And what this means is that over time, we can gain this expertise right here in Africa. Because with this testbed, we intend to improve the thrust and the speed that this engine is able to, to work at. Which begs the question, because we are using a stationary power supply, how in, how in future are we going to make this work? Because you need a, a really big power supply to be able to get this electronic propulsion system to allow you to take you to Mars and back. How will we make this work? Well, we're living in very exciting times, ladies and gentlemen, because in parallel to the electronic propulsion system that we're building, cold fusion um, energy reactors are progressing at a very rapid rate. And they estimate that in the next five to 10 years, we'll have cold fusion reactors that are small enough and, and can give us enough energy to power our homes and our cars for years. So what we intend to do is to couple this electronic cold fusion nuclear reactor power supply to electronic fusion um, propulsion system that we're building right now and together build an engine that we can fit into a vehicle not too much bigger than the vehicle you drive right now. So that instead of buying a car and going off to the nearby mall, you can just buy a car, get out of the showroom and take it on a test drive to a different planet. <laughs> Yes, this will become a reality, believe it or not. Um, my hope is all the resources that the universe, the infinite resources that the universe has to offer us will suddenly be accessible to, to all. And what's more, these resources will be accessible to everyone regardless of income levels. It has to be affordable. Um, you can do mine resources in different planets, you can get water off different planets. You don't need to fight over water here on Earth. And what's more, um, it's not going to be limited to an elitist view. So, well, I believe that in this room, in this city, in this country, and on this African continent, we have all the resources, all the talent, and all the creativity to make this a possibility. I'd like to encourage each and every one of you to get involved, whether it be in an engineering capacity, or if you're an architect or a civil engineer, thinking about the kind of structures we can build to make space living a reality for the generations after us. And if you're a doctor or a medical, biomedical engineer, thinking about what the effect of space will have on our bodies, so that two, three generations from now, when our children are born, they're no longer restricted by the borders that bound us here on Earth, 
but they have the whole universe to explore and live in. Thank you.